New health care law has states worrying about how they're going to pay for it as Washington talks additional tax hikes. I spoke exclusively with uh, the California Republican gubernatorial candidate, former eBay CEO, billionaire Meg Whitman, just moments ago, I asked her what this means for jobs. This health care plan is going to be a huge problem for businesses in California. Small businesses are, it's going to increase costs. Big businesses, it's going to increase costs. And frankly, the biggest problem for California is it's going to cost the state an extra $3 billion to cover this federal health care program at a time when we simply can't afford it. You know we're facing a $20 billion budget deficit over the next 16 months. How we're going to absorb another $3 billion is not at all clear. So I think this is the wrong thing. Thing at the wrong time when we're in the middle of a recovery. You know, there are a lot of governors, even gubernatorial candidates, uh, state insurance commissioners, uh, attorneys general, who are fighting this in the courts, trying to settle this there. Um, what do you make of that? Well, I think people are pushing back against something that they know will be bad for business and bad for their state budget. And every attorney general and every governor are trying to figure out how can I defend my state from an unfunded mandate. And so what you're seeing is, you know, pr primarily, obviously, Republican governors and Republican attorney generals using everything at their disposal to try to push back on something that is headed our way that is extremely difficult for states to absorb. Now, not too long ago, Meg, when I was in Washington upon the passage of um, the health care bill that soon became law, uh, your likely opponent, should you get the Republican nomination, uh, Attorney General Jerry Brown, former Governor Brown, had said he would not go along with this uh, cascade of court filings, as he put it, um, to try to right. torpedo this in the courts. What do you say about that and his stance that this is something that Congress should be dealing with? And, and, and not lawyers in, in courts. Yeah. Well, I think Jerry Brown is on the side of implementing Obamacare. And that's because his history is about increasing taxes um, on businesses and, and individuals and increasing government spending. He is a big government politician. So frankly, I think he actually supports this Obamacare initiative. So he has no interest in fighting it uh, through any means. And uh, so I think he's quite happy to have this, you know, rain down on, on California businesses. And I think he doesn't understand the very negative effect this will have. And he has not outlined a plan to turn California around. And he has not outlined a plan on how we're going to pay this incremental $3 billion that, uh, that will result, um, you know, from this, uh, this national health care plan. Because, he's, you know, the other side says, and Jerry Brown says, and, and, and some of those in the press and your fine state have been saying, that $3 billion number is overinflated. Well, I don't think we know, to tell you the truth, Neil. I mean, the, the, the chapters are unfolding on this health care plan as we speak. I mean, $3 billion is the number that I have heard. You know, there's been a number of third parties who have validated that number. Frankly, it could be higher. Um, so I don't think we know. This is all becoming, you know, clear. What route would you take to get those deficits in line? In New Jersey, Chris Christie is trying to do it all on the spending side. No tax increases, uh, no fee increases, none of that. Just all spending. Um, and he hopes to hack that down. He's not the first, he'll likely not be the last governor to say that that's the way he's going to do it, but that's his mantra. Is it realistic to say that you can balance budgets in, in California just cutting spending? It is realistic. Um, and here's what we've got to do. We have to attack spending. There's no question that we are not running the state of California efficiently and effectively. And I've outlined $15 billion of spending cuts that, frankly, I think will make the, straight, the state stronger, not weaker. But at the same time, we've got to incentivize business. If we do not put people back to work in California, I promise you there is no way out of this mess. So I, want, I have proposed a series of targeted tax cuts to get businesses hiring fast. And I'm here in Riverside, California today to talk about eliminating the factory tax. We're one of only a handful of states that penalizes manufacturers by charging them a sales tax on the equipment that they buy to manufacture in California. It's not competitive. So if well, we you can know, get people back to work, in, in that the, will raise revenues. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm saying your opponent in the Republican race has said that 10 percent cuts in all related taxes for everybody in the state as a way to stimulate the type of job growth you would want to see in the factory you're sitting in now. What do you say to that? I'd say we can't afford it right now. We cannot afford an across-the-board tax cut. 
it's the right thing to do, but someone has to be the adult in the room here, and we cannot afford that kind of tax cut right now, not on top of a $20 billion budget deficit. So what I want to do is get people back to work, some targeted tax credits to get hiring going, cut government spending, and then turbocharge the economy by an across-the-board tax cut. But you have to pace and sequence this smartly, otherwise you will increase the budget deficit, not decrease the budget deficit, and that's something we simply can't afford in California. All right, now, while well, you're largely a well-known giant in the corporate world before you entered this as the former head of eBay, you've had to spend a good deal of your own fortune um, to run this race. And the latest tabs I have put around $46 million, substantially more than Jerry Brown has available. In fact, Jerry Brown's been making a virtue out of that and saying that, look, I'm up against big money, big bucks, a billionaire. Um, do you think the money and how much you're spending boomerangs on you? You know, what I'm trying to do, Neil, is get our message out. I was not well known in a political context in California. And so what we are doing is making sure voters in California understand what I'm focused on. I want to create and keep jobs in California. That is the most important priority. I want to cut government spending so we can use taxpayers' money more efficiently so we can make smart investment choices. And then I want to fix our kindergarten through 12th grade education system. I think voters are really smart. They will look at all this information. They will decide who who um, they want to lead California um, as their next governor. So what I can do is get the message out through radio, TV, the internet, and then of course I'm traveling the state every single day um, and, uh, and talking to, to voters about the plan that I have for the state. Meg Whitman, thank you very much.